McGraw Millhaven on KTRS. 837, Big 550, KTRS. Don't open up your tuition bill. It's skyrocketing. That's all right. Just take out more student loans. Well, that's how it's been for the last number of uh, years. Policy researcher at the Show Me Institute, Michael Highsmith, joins us to talk about the rising student loan debt. Good morning, Michael Highsmith. Can we turn his microphone on? Let's try that. Let's try that again. Good morning. One, two, three. There we All go. Good? All right. How about that? All right, Michael. Um, let's talk about this rising student loan debt. How yeah. bad is it? So I don't think it's any surprise to anyone that student loan debt is an issue. Right. But I don't think anyone realizes quite how big of an issue it is. Right now, nationwide, we're looking at $1.2 trillion dollars which, to put that in perspective, that's more than all credit card debt in the nation. And um, kids graduate or don't graduate with this debt. Right. And so you're talking right off the bat, you've got a two, $300 payment mm -hmm. for your entry-level position. Right. You have The average student loan debt is in the $30,000. And if you have kids who are dropping out of college, they don't make it through the full four years, they're not making as much money as they'd hope. They're still making roughly the same as what a high school graduate would make. And they don't have the wage premiums to pay that off. And that $300 that you have to pay, that you can't refinance, mm -hmm. that you can't declare bankruptcy right. on, um, is hindering you from buying a car, buying insurance, buying anything, you buying can a house, anything, yeah. buying a soda. Mm -hmm. And so how, what do we do about it? Well, so uh, in this paper that me and our education director, Michael McShane, recently authored, yeah. it's called Moving Mizzou Forward. We look at different reforms around the nation. It's a case study, and we look at a couple different schools in Texas. We look at University of Chicago. We look at Purdue and just highlight a couple of things that they're doing on how to potentially save students money. So uh, tuition at state universities mm -hmm. have also been skyrocketing. Right. And so that's the thing. I want to go to a state university normally – Used to be, back in the day when I was a young whippersnapper, those state institutions were highly subsidized. Right. So you could go and pay $100 a credit hour in state. I want to say it was like, when I was going to school, it was like 40 50 bucks a credit hour, right. which was manageable. Yeah, the big issue we're looking at right now is that tuition is skyrocketing. You look at the past 10 years, it's gone up roughly 60%. It's, it's growing three times as fast in price as just about everything else is, and students aren't able to keep up with that. So what are other so, places doing? So actually, Rick Perry down in Texas, one of his challenges was that he wanted colleges to come out with a $10,000 degree, right. which is almost laughable, and it was laughable when it came out because right. $10,000 for a degree is certainly a little cheaper than what it is right now. Right. Um, and what they did, actually, is at first a couple of people were able to go to these degrees and pay $10,000, but the problem was the schools were just subsidizing. They were raising the prices for other students so that they could subsidize a select few people and say, hey, we have a $10,000 degree. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, okay. Uh, once they realized that's the problem, there was call for reform, and they came up with something called competency-based education. And what that is is essentially instead of having to sit in a classroom for 15 weeks to get uh, credit for a program, once you show that you've mastered the subject, you're able to move on to the next program. So students can go through classes quicker from one to another. You can potentially graduate in less than four years. And if you spend less time in a classroom, it's a smaller bill and you're able to earn money quicker. That's interesting. Now, the other interesting thing is technology. And a lot of people have, e e e not just the University of Phoenix, where they it's all a telecommute or whatever else, but there are legitimate universities that are having online courses, right. which is a fraction of the cost, mm -hmm. but yet it still costs the same amount as going to sit in front of a teacher for a whole semester. Right, the potential for saving when it comes to online learning is unreal. Right, like, but you, they don't. They, they're, they're, I mean... The, the, the few times, the few friends I have who has gone back to school to get a nursing degree or mm -hmm. whatever else, you know, it's still ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 like it would be right. if they were going to school every day. Yeah, and so and a, a huge issue is a matter of reducing tuition. But another thing that we looked at in this case is how we can potentially make it easier to deal with the debt that a student takes on in order in case they're still dealing with a pretty expensive tuition. And, and so, so what are some, so, some of those things? Uh, something Purdue did is they launched a program that has an income share agreement. So this is another type of reform. What this is essentially is you borrow a loan, same way you'd borrow a federal loan, but instead of paying an X amount of money, you pay a percentage of your salary for the next 10 years. So what this does, or X amount of years, 10 is just an example. Right. The the idea behind this is that if the university is the one who makes more money because the student does well, there's an incentive for the university to really make sure that that student follows through and you don't have as high of a chance of a student dropping out. And 
as well, if a student does find themselves unable to make a really large salary, they're not on the hook for as large of a federal loan. Interesting. So the university, there's an incentive for the university to graduate that kid and right, get them exactly. on. Right, exactly. Uh, really interesting stuff. Wow. Um, and where is this paper? Uh, you can read about this at showmeinstitute.org. It's called Moving Mizzou Forward, Reforms Around the Nation. A lot of people think that um, if you give loans to students, mm-hmm. all that does is create higher costs. In other words, if, if I'm subsidizing your loans, mm-hmm. you now have more money to go to school. If you didn't have that loan and all the kids didn't have the money to go to schools, the schools would figure out a way to make it cheaper because they don't have the pot of money to go after. Exactly. And it really does just become a matter of making this a necessity and making it a demand um, that you don't have to throw so much money towards. Schools are taking advantage of students who are taking out right. so many loans, graduating with sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 of debt, and they don't know what to do Some after Some people that. wish they would graduate with $60,000 right. in debt. I mean, look at Washington yeah. Uni- University, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, what is it, $60,000, $65,000 a year? It, it can add up, for right? Sure. And so how many, if every kid was forced to pay that, mm-hmm. how many kids would they have? Right. They wouldn't have very many kids. And, and another huge thing that we looked at is not just affordability, but relevance, whether you graduate with a degree and if it's going to be useful in the workforce because it's potential. There's a lot of kids out there actually who graduate with a four-year degree and they're still not making more than their high school counterparts. Right. Well, that, I've also heard like there are, like if you, want an, if you want a history degree, that would only charge you X. But if you wanted an engineering degree, mm-hmm. that would charge you more or right. something. I'm not so sure I like that. <laughs> Tier, right? Tiered tiered degrees because mm-hmm. you want the you want the arts person to, uh, to understand the, the business side eh? and you want the business person to understand the arts side mm-hmm. so absolutely all right what's the website uh show me institute.org it's really interesting stuff michael highsmith policy researcher at the show me institute good stuff thanks for coming in thanks for having me 844 big five